Good evening, friends. I'm very happy to be here again tonight to worship our Lord. You could look in the face of that and say there is no God. Isn't that beautiful? I think of, you think of all the science in the world, there's none of them could even make a piece of that leaf. It's got life in it. They make something look like it, but it won't have life in it. God only can produce life. Now we are happy to be here, very hot, and we give out tonight that I'm going to pray for the sick. And I, I want to live true to my promise. You know how many believe in being loved to do things? I, I believe in it. I'm just going to step over here to this <coughs> microphone just a minute because I believe you hear better from here, don't you? And um, I'm not very big, and I haven't got very much voice, and so I can't talk too loud. And um, so I want you to hear what I'm going to speak about just for a few moments before we form a prayer line. And I'm definitely sure that God wants me to do this. First, I want to read some of his blessed word. And I was standing behind the curtain to, to hear the letter read just now about the lady that the angel of the Lord pointed out here in the building that was laying there and toiling her conditions, how she was dying with cancer, and the woman with her was dropped colon and so forth, and here they are riding back that they're both perfectly normal and well. Well, that alone, brothers, was ever, that ought to just take all the unbelief away from everybody. When he speaks and pronounces something, no matter how far it's gone, it's going to be just that way, see. I, I've never seen it to fail, see. It never will. It can't fail. Now, I can fail because I'm a man. But when it speaks that inspiration, that will always be just that way, see. It, it never fails. Now, there's many times that I can speak to people and talk to them and things, or if I go, if the anointing is very deep, and I go to talking to people, why, well, first thing, your vision will break before me, and I can speak to the person, maybe that will, and they can't hide their life, so that will probably inspire them, but that doesn't heal them, you see. But I've always thought, and in Africa, this worked perfectly. And when I was, would just, they would see something done, something other than the inspirational line like that, some person that they know, that that's what was wrong with them. They would all massive, but one, one accord, just accepted every bit then, and, and they would go to getting well and getting up and, and getting around, see. But it seems to be just a little bit harder in America to do so. Now, the thing of it is that we've had so much teaching and so much everything else until it, uh, it's uh, kind of got us all tore up, but yet I believe that God's going to move right down among us tonight, and here's one thing that I want to confess. See, when I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I believe that I have allowed too much of the ministry to the just waiting and watching and being sure that what I'm speaking instead of just praying for the people, you see. Or it's the prayer of faith that saves the sick. That's right. See? Sometimes their own prayer, but sometimes a prayer of intercession will... Uh, will help out. I wish to read something about prayer over here in the good book. James, the fifth chapter, beginning with the fourteenth verse. Everyone listen closely now. Is any sick among you? Let him call the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, and on him with all in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith shall save the sick. The Lord shall raise him up. And if he has committed any sin, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for the other, that you may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man. Now, a righteous man is not a sinless man. See? A righteous man is a man who is confessing his sins in a righteous one. See? See? A righteous man. Now, what? To prove it the next verse. He lies. Was a man subject to like passions as we are? And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. 
a man that has his ups and downs just like we do, not an angel, a man. And he prayed again, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. May the Lord bless his word. Now, Elijah was not an angel. He was a man, and he had his ups and downs and his uh, troubles like we do, and he had his passions. The Bible said he was a man that was like passion, subject to like passions as we are. He was just as apt to make a mistake as you are or I am. He's just as apt to do something wrong as you are or I am. But he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not for the space of three years and six months. Think of that. God listened to a mortal's prayer. And I say this with, with all true reverence. There is not another force on earth. There's not nothing on earth, no matter what it is, what kind of gifts it is. There's nothing in the world that will come ahead of prayer. Prayer is what does the work. And when the angel of the Lord giving me my commission, he said to me, you were born into this world to take a gift of divine healing to the peoples of the world. And I said, Sir, I am uneducated, and I am dwell among my people, and we're all poor, and I, I have no education. The people would not believe me, sir, and I could not do that. And he said, As the prophet Moses was given two signs to vindicate this sending of God, so will you be given two signs for this vindication. said, One of them will be that you will take the people by the hand. And said, in there, just keep quiet, and it'll be told you. You're just saying what's wrong with the person. Well, I couldn't understand that. But it's not for me to understand. It's for me to believe it. See? And uh, I can't figure it out. I don't know. And as we are saying here the other night, one of the men that even made fun and said, that's wrong. So that's absolutely wrong. The man was stricken in the pulpit and paralyzed his hands. His hands spotted all the like leprosy today. That one hand will appear in my next meeting as a testimony. It was true. He said, now it'll come to pass after that, if they won't believe that, it'll come to pass that you'll know the very secrets of the people's heart. And said, when you tell them that, they'll believe that, or they'll have to. See? And I said, well, uh, that's what I was here for, sir. I said, I, I, I come here because ministers has told me that was the wrong thing, and I would get all, and that's why I'm here. And he, then he quoted the scripture to me, and it referred to me, knowest thou not the scripture, that how that Jesus told Nathaniel where he was at when he was under the tree before he called him, knew the secrets of the woman's heart after he talked to her a while at the well. He referred to those scriptures. And then he told me that Jesus said he would be the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he left me. Now, anybody can come in here. I realize this, Christian friend. And remember, I'm not de-Christianizing. De I'm not saying one word against anybody, no matter if you're a Roman Catholic or if you're an Orthodox Jew, whatever you are, if you're Methodist, Baptist, Pentecost, whatever you might be. That doesn't matter to me. If you've received Jesus Christ as your Savior and God is your Father, you're my brother see, and sister. That's right. I don't care what church. Now, I realize that there might be possible, which there is. Now, we all believe here that there is a true God and that there is a true Christian. Don't you believe that? We all believe that. Well then we know that there is some that doesn't live like Christians. We know that they claim to be Christians, but they are not Christians. You know them by their fruits. They say they are, but they can't produce what they're talking about. Is that right? And Jesus said, by their fruits you shall know them. Now, when you see one that claims to be and isn't, and God isn't with the person to show that he's living in their life, 
then you know that the Father is testifying to you that by the fruit you know that he isn't a Christian. From the, you can't judge him. You know right to judge him. Just know him by his fruits. Is that right? Now, if I come here and tell you that God told me to come down and to, and to heal the sick and to open the eyes of the blind and unstop the deaf ears, and well, that's good. You, well, all right, now, Brother Branham, if God told you to do that, I'll, I'm going to look at your meetings. If he told you to do that and this man comes to you and asks you for that, give you all the plea that he can, then I, I believe you're right. If you do that, I, I see. I say God is with you. That's what God told you to do. See? Then you have to notice when you testify something, if God, if the man testifies, you have a right to doubt that. See? Or not doubt it, but to watch it. And then if God testifies to the same thing that it's absolutely the truth, then that's not the man's testimony. That's God confirming that testimony. Isn't that right? Now, if you'll notice, the commission of the, the great one who came, now, I do not worship that angel. I mean, many, many times. And when this group of people tonight, some nearly 3,500 to 4,000 people, when we, when we stand together in the presence of God, I will have to give account. And, I, and would I rather to me to say, now, just a minute, Christian, just a minute. Now, this angel of God and this light that they took that, I don't know what done that, but uh, this angel of God, I, I don't know about that. And uh, I, I, I want to be truthful that when I stand before my maker, that my records can be read what I told you. See? If there's anything I've got to confess, I want to confess it now, right now. And then the only thing that I can do is be honest. And these things that he predicted by his spirit that they're telling me would come to pass, and many of you here are, are following me in the virgin meetings when I was just in the beginning. And it's uh, come to pass just exactly the way that he said it would. Hell is it the truth. How many know that was back in the beginning when I know nothing about the other? I just take the person by the hand. How many remember that in predicting that the others would be? Now, look at your hundreds of hands. And now, has it come to pass just like he said? Well, now, the Bible says there be one among you who is spiritual, a prophet. I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him. And what he says comes to pass, then hear it. For I am with that man. Is that right? I am with that person. I hear this comes to pass here. Now, I try to tell you that there's nothing about me that would heal anybody. I have no magic power. I paid the price. He's the only one that can heal. He did it at Calvary. And for me to do something that he did at Calvary would be robbing him of his Calvary sacrifice. So I can't do it as Christian friends. And to be honest with you, I don't believe there's anyone else that can do it. I believe the only thing that any man can do to you is get your faith pointed towards Calvary. He might preach you the gospel so plain that, and, or talk to you in such a way that you would see, there it is, he knows what he's speaking about. He speaks with earnestness. He proves it through scripture that that is the sacrifice, that's the place. And you look there and get well. I believe anything else outside of leading you to Calvary would be wrong. Anything outside of Calvary, like it would be in, in the person. But I said that the Lord said that these things that would take place would, would come from him, that he sent me to work, not to heal people, but watch. He said you were given a gift. Now, when Paul talk about the gift, there is no such a thing. That's unscriptural. The gift, 1 Corinthians 12 said, uh, a gift, plural. So there's no the gift, it's a gift, see? And it might be one, work one way or another through teaching the Word, through something else, or uh, however it is, knowledge, and all these things that works in with, the, with healing. It's faith and healing. That's what it is. And now, you don't have to wait to be a minister to do that. You don't have to wait to be a, a deacon. You don't, only thing you have to do is have faith in God, and the Bible said, pray one for another. If there's any among you sick, don't even bother the pastor call the elders of the church. Let them pray for you. Is that right? I just read it. Now that's the rule. And then he said, confess your faults one to another. 
and pray one for another that you may be healed. For the affectional fervent prayer of a deacon, no, of an elder, no, of a righteous man, a good man. If the man sincere and believe, and affectional fervent prayer of that righteous man availeth much. See? Now that, in other words, here you're standing here, and this man is praying for you, trying to help you, and you're believing with all your heart, and both of you together, as two witnesses, are coming before God. Something bound to move. Now, something's got to happen. Now, and he, now this, as this gift of seeing, that's just the same to me as it would be for you to sit on the table and eat when you're hungry. See? It's just there. I never put it there. It never come there. And if I testify that and it's wrong, God doesn't testify that and you say he's wrong. But brother, not in the meeting, but if things is predicted will be come to pass time after time, place after place, and everywhere in different positions and times and so forth, and every time it's perfect. Why? It's God speaking, not me. I wouldn't know what was going to happen. But he knows all the future. Don't you believe that? And he can drop it to us as he will. Now, those things are true. But the angel said to me, if you get the people to believe, now listen closely to all we're going to pray for a group of people, I believe, tonight. If you get the people to believe that, to believe what? To believe that God sent me to pray for you. See? That God got sent me to, not for my own merit, what he did before I was born. He gave that. And I'm to pray for you. If you get the people to believe you, and then be sincere when you pray. There's the thing. Well, now, instead of that, when it began to come up, I begin to, everything I've done, I just sat still. I watched over the audience. And where the Heavenly Father would show me something, I'd speak that. I'd speak this. And the first thing you know, it's just a very few gets to the line, and I'm just so weak that they just take me out. Now, it isn't while I'm standing up there on the platform, I just stand there hour after hour. But it isn't when I'm outside. I have to got to myself all right. It's when coming in between there, see? It's coming down. When you start to leave the platform, I turn around and I feel like this go. Oh, where you at? What's happening? Where you? There you are. See, you wonder if you're going this way or that way, or, or what are you doing? You know, where you're walking, crawling, or somebody leading you, see? And then in a few minutes, you, you begin to think, I'm, I'm at the meeting now. Yeah, I'm, that's all right. Then I, I don't want to talk about the meeting then. I go to talking about something else. And Mr. Bosworth and many of them here talk. They'll start and they'll say, so it's a nice night. Isn't it lovely? The stars are pretty or something like that. You never mention the meeting. Never say nothing. For about an hour or two. And then Mr. Baxter, uh, Mr. Bosworth, or whoever it is, may come to my room, say to my wife or my son or whoever's with me, how's he feeling? All right. Maybe I'm lying down there and maybe reading the Bible. They come in and say, oh, Brother Branham, it was a marvelous meeting. What happened, Brother? Isn't that right, Brother Bosworth? What happened? Then they'll sit down and reveal the meeting to me. I say, I remember the one or two people I was talking to, uh, the vision come, but then it just went out on me. See? Well, so much of that, see, and I allowed too much to that instead of doing what he told me to do to pray for the people. Now, I've noticed this. And I believe that men that are born again are led by the Spirit of God. Do you believe that? Yeah. I just want you to notice something right here. I was hoping Brother Baxter would be present, but I think someone parked their cars wrong out there and they had some time out there tonight about parking in a place and they couldn't get some car going in here or something. And he went out to see about that, he and the Brother Cox man. But I want him to be here. Now, every time that I seem to follow what I'm led to do, just the leading, wherever I feel led to go, it's always best to do just what I feel led to do. And now, how many of you sure stand in here to tell the vision and the things that's going to come to pass? I said, all right. If you notice in there, when I asked him about the meeting, I said, how shall I hold a meeting? He said, just as you are led to do. That is, there's no cut and dried program of it, whatever God leads to do. And friends, since I was coming up, my wife somewhere here in this building with the baby, 
coming up there today, and my son, he's probably back with his mother somewhere up in the balcony or somewhere. Now, coming up the road the other day after I went down, and by the way, the boy, the latest boy that we've had prayer for here that stays with me, her boy is healed and well now. We thank God. They thought he's taking polio. He's a young minister, a veteran out of the army, and he's all right now. And the lady's back home. So mother leaves in the morning with the baby. We're getting ready then to go right straight from here to Zion City. I've got a testimony from Zion for you, a young fellow who's waiting near in a few minutes now to come to the platform. Now, this, um, in, in doing in this, I have always noticed if something comes to me and begins to speak to me, many times I cut that away. And God will bless, but not like he will if you do what he tells you to do. Be aware of doing it. And coming up the other day, I said, how many remembers I asked you to pray for me that God would confirm that in my heart? What, you remember? Have you been praying? Well, here's what it was. Was what I'm fixing to do tonight. Pray for the people. That's right. That's what he seemed to... Now, when I left, uh, Brother Baxter, I hope if he's standing near that he will come forward if he's near to, in confirmation of this. If I don't, I'll mention it when he comes to the platform. That when we was, I was here in America as the vision had been seen about the little boy being raised from the dead. It went out in many, many Bibles. Many of you sitting here tonight heard it said. How many of you heard it said about a little boy going to be resurrected even before it come to pass? Let's see your hands go up. Look over this building around the audience. I guess at least two or three hundred people right here. A year or more before it come to pass, see, that it was going to be described just how he looked and told you it would be in the birth of Enoch. Is that right? And it appeared just exactly that way with the same type of boy. Is that right? Now, the Lord seemed to speak to me, go to Finland. Well, I went to Finland. Now, while I was over there, the brother said, let's go over to Sweden. That's all right. Over to Norway. That's all right. But there wasn't any of them I was led to. I was led to Finland. The meetings in Norway were all right. The meetings in Sweden was all right, but nothing like Finland. That's where the Lord said, go. Led to go to Finland. Then going to South Africa, he led me to one place, Durban, South Africa. Brother Baxter, you're a witness of that. Brother Baxter now. Durban. And now, I'm, I just read the seventh grade reader, so I'm not very good on my geography. So I told my wife, and bless her heart, she's the sweetest woman in the world to me. <laughs> she's just about as bad as I am. So I told her, I said, honey, when you write me, you write me to Durban, Southern Rhodesia. I thought, sure, Durban is in Southern Rhodesia. Why, well, it'd be like writing me Hammond, British Columbia. <laughs> See? It's another nation altogether, another place. And here was my, I got down there and I stopped at Johannesburg. I said, well, well, is this Southern Rhodesia? No, this is South Africa. Well, what part of it is Southern Rhodesia? There is no Southern Rhodesia, South Africa. I said, well, where's Durban at? Oh, he said, that's going back over on the other coast. I said, well, there's where the Lord wants me to go. All my mail was being sent, and she sent me the baby's picture and so forth to care with me. And I never got it till I was about a, a week before I come home. Because here come my mail plumb down into Durban, and I thought it was going to Durban. And all the other meetings is wonderful. People are sitting here. It's come always in South Africa here from that meeting to be in this meeting here. And the meetings were wonderful everywhere, but there wasn't any of them that even shattered Durban. Is that right, brother? Durban had the place. Durban was the call. And if you'll find out, I'll do this. If I'll just do what God leads me to do, it's always the best. Now I'm going to ask you something tonight. I'm going to call a large prayer line here. I don't know. I know this one thing. Even before I come to the platform here, the Holy Spirit was with me. He met me in the floor. Come on the grounds tonight. Well, Billy, come out there and pick me up and said, Daddy, I don't know how you're going to get your car in there tonight. I said, well, let's drive around the block. We went around the block and there's still a bunch of cars parked. He said, I don't know. We went around a few times more and finally we said, we just got to go in because Brother Baxter will be calling me. I noticed his presence was there. I'm going to try tonight, even though if I see vision, I'm going to try to keep it to my or close my eyes or do something until I absolutely bring the person up here and pray for them and let them go off the platform. See, I'm going to try to do that tonight and pray for everybody as long as I can stand here to do so, to pray for everybody. 
Now, to, now if he speaks it right out to me, I, I can't help it, you see. If it's something I believe in a person's life that up to you, if a sinner would help me get in that line or something, I believe God would speak that sinner out. <laughs> if I'd see that, I'd probably call it out, see. Or something I thought would hinder you some way, I'd call it out. Otherwise, I'm going to try, if God will help me, see, if God will help me, just to not say nothing about the vision, but pray for the person. And I want everyone that comes in this line to do me this one favor, if you will. I want you to just be truthful before God. And if there is a change in your condition within the next 24 hours, I'll see how many uh, cards and how many people we pray for or how many people that comes in line. I'll let someone of the brethren ask me keep account of how many come through. And when you be honest enough with me, I want to know if you say, well, I, I've got better. There's something happened to me. I'd like to see what happens in the next 24 hours because coming from my place, I come here tonight and I said, Dear Heavenly Father, if this is you moving me in my heart, which I believe it is, then this will be the best, more results will happen tonight than any night of the meeting if you're leading me. I can't get away from it. I've tried it for three or four nights. Even last week, I tried. I said, now, next place, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I said, we are not just going to bring the people up and pray. I tried it. I said, well, Lord, maybe you didn't want it. Now, I can't get away from that, and I can't leave this city without doing that. God's calling me to just bring the people up here and pray for them. And I know it's the truth. And I want you to come by the book stand. And just write out a little what your name is, whatever it is, and just say, I, this is my condition after 24 hours or something like that. I, I, I am healed, or I feel better, or I am no better, and, or, or something on that order. What God has done for you, would you do that, say amen. Now, I'll pray for just as many as I can. Then at the end of the service, I'll try to make a committal prayer to all maybe that I can't get to. Now, this is something that I have not done for years. And I don't mean one of those old-fashioned fast lines you used to send me stand there unconscious and let the people pass by. Many got healed that way, true. I don't mean that. I want to bring you up here and talk with you and pray with you. Let you go off the platform. That's what God says in his word. That's what the commission of the angel, and I'm always, I never did do that. And I want to try it in Hammond, Indiana, tonight to begin with, God helping me to do it. How many believe divine healing is lasting? Let's see your hand. Little Mr. House from Zion City, Illinois, I wish you'd come forward. Mm -hmm. Here's a little lad that was so cross-eyed in a meeting at Zion City, Illinois. His father is a minister of the gospel, and he, I may not hear he's, he travels across the country to see me. Look out to the audience there and see how cross-eyed that child is. I say, how long is divine healing lasting? It's forever, right? Is that right? Look up in this way at this audience up here. See how perfectly straight his eyes is? Now look, Sonny, up to this audience, you follow my finger with your eyes. Don't go don't, out don't with your head with your eyes. Cross eyes are locked, you know that. Or to this audience out here, follow my finger, Sonny. God bless you, sonny boy. I believe God's going to make a preacher out of you some of these days. <laughs> God bless you. Let's say praise the Lord. Oh. That's been about three or four years ago. The boy's eyes are still straight and will ever remain straight. Now, just he's happy to meet me out there. He said, you know me, Brother Brandon? He's a little tight then. And I said, don't believe I do. He said, you remember Zion City where the... Chicago Tribune writer and all them wrote up that great article, said the main difference between Reverend Branham, you've read it many times, I guess, and said, and most people, he believes the Bible, said, could you imagine a man born in the southern states in Kentucky picking up a little Negro child that was cross-eyed from Waukegan, from some kind of a slum down there or something, there, and saying, daughter, your eyes be straight, and said, they come straight. <laughs> Look here, let me tell you something. I don't care whether it's a Negro child, whether it's a Japanese child, whether it's a Chinese child, whether it's a Korean child, or whoever it is. God is no respect of person. That's God's child. Right. 
don't care where you're born below the line or above the line or where you want to, you'll get in the you'll get in the groove when God calls you, that's right. You'll get in the place where the Holy Spirit's are falling. God's no respecter of person. That's right. You'll get right in the move with God and you'll move in the spirit. And there's no middle walls of petition. Jesus Christ tore it all down and made all man brotherhood. Amen. I believe that with all my heart. It's truly I was born a southerner, a rebel. But I was born again one day. That made the difference. <laughs> Amen. You love him? Yeah. All right. Where's Billy Paul? Is he near? I don't even know. Where is he? See where he's at, if you will. And I don't even know where, if he give out prayer cards today. Or if he did, if he didn't, we'll try yesterday or, or something. Uh, everybody love the Lord. That's wonderful. You're going to be praying for me tonight, and I'm going to be praying for you. Now, if God, if the Holy Spirit of God has come down and revealed those things, the secrets of the hearts of the people, and made it known that he's here and his blessings is here, and you'll have to admit that every night of the meeting has been perfect every time Dozens after dozens after dozens. Is that right? It's been perfect. All right. Now, if that be so, then what I have told you is the truth. Say just a minute. I want to see. I mentioned going overseas, Brother Baxter, the first time. I said I was led to go to Finland. Is that right? Finland's where the real meeting was. The best of meetings. Leading is what I'm talking about. Thank you, Brother Baxter. You said when we were leaving Finland and the airplane, you said to me, Brother Baxter, my mission is complete over here now. I've done what the Lord sent me to do. We shall go to Norway and Sweden, but God sent me to Finland. No. No, I don't want any water right now. Um, you see, I forgot saying that to him, see. And then in Africa, when we left Johannesburg, and they couldn't go to Durban on account of a itinerary, I said, as far as I'm concerned, the meeting's over. We're ready to go home. That's right. As far as I... See, when you get out of the leading of the Lord, it's something different. And I believe that God leads, and we should follow. Don't you think so? Thank you, Brother Baxter, and all of you tonight. The good Lord bless you. Pray now that God will help me tonight to pray for a great multitude of people. And I've asked them, Brother Baxter, if they would come to the book stand tomorrow night and let me see what happens to the number that's prayed for. Billy, did you get our prayer card? What, what? Old. All right. How many can we stand up here at a time? Don't be weary. We will, uh, God willing, we're going to pray for a great group of you tonight. This is as many as we possibly can pray for. And now, um, He's got a hundred of them. Can we send 50 of them up at a time? What say? Well, how many would you say stand at 25. 25? All right, sir. That's the first 25. 01, 02, 03, 04, 05. Right up down here till the first 25. Then the next 25. Be ready. It won't be but a little bit till we'll have those prayed for and then just so forth and so on. And yes, if we... All right, he said, it's just so warm to have him standing in a big row. O1 to O25. And then you, how many here has got prayer cards that's been from other days? Have you got them here? Raise your hand. There's still things about the child. I don't, I don't know, see. But I do want to pray for the baby, see. So you just, you, you live around here? You're from Peoria. Are you here to stay a few days? All right. We'll see. Maybe we can get to it tonight if I possibly can. I want to pray for the for the baby. All right. You you come, baby. There's something I didn't see what happened. I see what started it. In birth, but I, I I didn't know just what happened to take place. Now just a moment. I I want to talk just a minute to this person. So I know that the Spirit of God is on me. Now look, if this was my mother standing here, and I was somebody else, I'd want that somebody else to be just the best to do everything they could to help my mother, see? 
And now, I, I want God to move, if he will, and to help me. And you pray for me now. And I, just as the Spirit of God can get near the angel of the Lord, and then, now, I want you to, to talk to you just a minute. You believe that God will make you well, my sister? You believe that he'll help you now and heal you and will make you well? You do. You, now, you believe that what I have said is the truth. Have you been to the meetings before? And you've watched what he's done out there? And, and you see all the great signs that he moves out through the places there and heals those that are dying with cancers and hear doctors sign their statements, send it back, heal, see? And here's those that are crippled in wheelchairs come walking in, those that are on crutches and so forth. In here, the Holy Spirit will move out there and say, you've done a certain, certain thing, call sinners and all different kinds of people, telling them that. You believe that? You believe it's the truth coming from God? Well, then, of course, you know I'd know what was wrong with you then. If I, if I wanted to speak it, I, I would know. Now, friends, speaking with that woman like that, the angel of the Lord is near. That's right. I feel an anointing now. Now, the thing you pray that if the visions won't break forth enough to, to make me... Now, right now, right now, he's just settling over this building. Now, that is the truth. Friends, are before God, his presence is near. I know what's wrong with the lady. Yes, sir. All right, I want you to come here just a minute. I want to lay hands upon you, sister, as my sister. Now, Jesus Christ said this, go into all the world and preach the gospel. He said, lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. Prayer of faith shall save the sick. In many scriptures, you believe that? You believe it. You haven't always believed it, but you believe it now. Is that right? You belong to some other kind of a church that didn't believe that. Is that right? Mm -hmm. But there's, that's all right, see, I'm not convinced, that's all right. You believe it, I know what I'm speaking of? Huh? Yes, sir, Catholic. You're Catholic. Is that right? I see with the bees, you see, and with bees. That's right. You have stomach trouble, don't you? Sister, you're already healed, but I want to pray for you. Dear Heavenly Father, to fulfill this mission that I have had. I, I pray now, help me, dear God. I realize that this can't go very long. I, I ask you to make her well. God, may she just go out and testify among her people, telling what great things that you've done. This poor little gray-headed woman standing here, I ask for mercy for her, almighty God, and Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and through thee only is there access to these things. And I ask, Father, in the name of thy Son, Jesus, that I, as I bless her, may you heal her. Amen. Now, little mother, you're going to be all right now. You go on and just believe with all your heart that you're going to be all right. Wonderful. That you might know you people are coming through this line and the Holy Spirit is moving. He's here. Do you believe it? All right. All right, sir. Now, you believe if I ask our dear Jesus to heal you, he'll do it? You do. Well, you come close, Dad. I want to pray for you. Oh, Jesus, my master, my poor brother stands here aged and sick. I pray for mercy for my dear brother, and may he go away from here tonight, Lord, and be well. Will you grant it and let him get well and go home and be well and sound the rest of his life? Grant it, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, my brother, I, I have blessed you by praying for you. Not I have, but I have asked God's blessings upon you. And now, you've tried hard to believe for a long time, just to help your faith along. Now, you can go and eat your supper. Feel good. Yes, sir. Thank you. Your stomach trouble, that was bothering me. Now, you just go ahead and eat that. You're going to be all right. All right.
Let's say praise be to God. Now, little laddie boy, I want you to look this way. You're a very fine little lad, and do you believe that Jesus Christ will, will hear my prayer if I pray for you, honey? You do. Then you would, uh, you would be happy to be well, see. But no matter if I don't tell you what's wrong with you, you know what's wrong with you. But if I don't tell you, well, you believe just the same, won't you? All right. Now, you come near. I remember when my little boy, that's my boy, Billy Paul, there. And um, he, when he was just about your size, and oh my, how uh, I just hate it. I like to see him get to be a man, but I hate to see him grow up. And your, your daddy and mother may be the same way. But when you come up, you're going to love Jesus. You're going to love him. That's fine. I want you to. And I just pray that God will bless you, honey, and will make you a man of God. And God will use your little life out there in his service somewhere. Now, let's you and I pray. Dear Jesus, as this humble little lad leans his head over on my bosom tonight in praise, I ask, dear Father, that you heal his little body. And he's sincere. He comes here to be prayed for. He was in the line. And I ask you to make him well. Granted, Heavenly Father, and may he go out of here and get well. And may, after a while, all of his sickness leave him. And he'll get to be a man without his parry, and may he be a soul winner. Oh, I pray, Father, that you'll make him a gospel preacher, that he'll, that he'll just do your work. Grant it, Lord, hear the prayer of your servant, as he, as he knows and heard me speak, that you commissioned me as your servant to go pray for the sick and, and to show signs and wonders of Jesus. He believes it, and I, with the, all the fervent and I know how to put into my prayer and affection, I ask for this little boy's healing. Grant it, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Now, little laddie boy, I, I, I believe you're going to get well. You do, too. I think you're a mighty fine lad. And don't you come quite a distance to come here? Every night. I haven't been here every night. And you... You come from from Chicago, is that right? Mm-hmm. And um, you're suffering with a, a double rupture, is that right? All right, now you go off the platform and just thank Jesus and believe, and I believe you're going to get all right. Bless you. All right, but you come. Now, young lady, uh, I couldn't heal you if I had to. I'm, I'm your brother. Uh, in, in Jesus Christ. And the only thing that I could do would be pray for you. Isn't that right? Now, you know what's wrong with you. And God knows what's wrong with you. And I know what's wrong with you. But there's no need to me telling you because you already know. You believe that, don't you? But now, if I'll ask Jesus to heal you, you believe you'll get well? You believe you will. God bless your heart, little lady. That's a horrible thing for a child to have. And that's right. Usually when they're, when they're older and they take that, they get over pretty well. Isn't that right? But when they're young, then they don't, they don't do so well. But look, sister dear, Jesus Christ is here. He'll make you well. You believe that, don't you? All right. Now, I am his servant, and I pray. Now, the little girl, of course, I know what's wrong with her, but that's all right. Now, Heavenly Father... As your humble servant, I ask you to heal this child. May she go off the platform here and be happy, never have to take insulin no more, and be well and made perfectly normal. Grant it, dear Lord, through Jesus' name, I bless her with all my heart. As your servant, I pray for her that you'll make her every whit whole. Grant it, dear God. And if if there's anything in a way, please, God, forgive it just now, and I ask that she'll get well. And may the hour come where she'll be normal, well girl again. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, God bless you, honey. I, I know what's wrong with you, but I don't have to say it. You know, so now you go along. All right, God bless you. All right. Come, baby. Oh, he's wonderful. I believe those people are getting, getting healed. Don't you believe it? 
They are. I believe you are too, don't you believe it? I believe God's goodness is just pouring into you right now, don't you? What is God's goodness? His faith pouring into you. See? Pouring into your spirit. Now, have a one reverend. Now, his presence is here just because I'm not telling the people what's wrong with them. Well, you just, see, you just remember that his presence is here anyhow. See, his presence is here. Do you believe that, lady? I sure do. You do. You're a good believer. All right. Um, do you believe that he can uh, make you well? You can. I know it. You know he can. Now, if I don't say a word to you, don't even mention your disease or whatever's wrong with you, I, I don't know at this time. But if, uh, if he will make known to me what it is, or don't have to do that. If I just pray for you, you're going to get well, aren't you? Amen. You're going to get well. All right. Now, look, to help your faith so that you'll know it's a very odd thing that's wrong with you. Right. Isn't that right? And doctor after doctor can't tell that's you what's right. wrong with you. Is that right? That's right. Now, listen, isn't it right in the back of your neck that's a drawing? Right. Isn't that right? Come here just a minute. Oh, no. Dear Heavenly Father, the poor little woman standing here, and she don't realize, and the doctor can't find that devil that's sitting there. It's come upon her to afflict her. But, Lord, you know where he's laying in there. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands on her neck and rebuke that demon. Come out of her. Thou devil, leave the woman that she can be made well. All right, sister. Go home believing with all your heart. All right. Now, you come, lady. Do you believe with all your heart? All right. I'm going to ask our Lord to bless you. And will you go home and get where I want you? Hallelujah. Oh, Father, as your humble servant, with all my heart, you said the affectionate, fervent prayer. Oh, and I come, Father, not in my own name, in my righteousness, neither in the righteousness of this church or this people. We come in the righteousness of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, because he, grace, oh, abounded greater than sin, and it went above sin, and it smothered sin out, and now in smothering out sin, it smothered out sin. And now by the grace of Christ, by the great uh, commission that was given, I now lay hands upon this woman in obedience to what my master said, the last words that came from his lips, if they lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. You promised it, Master, and in obedience to that, just as I was baptizing the woman here in a pool of water, I lay hands on her with all my heart. I cry to thee, Master, heal her sick body, and may she get well. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. God bless you, sister. I believe that we have struck faith to heal, don't you? God bless you. All right, now come, lady. Now, do you believe with all your heart? Believe that God will will heal you if I ask him. Now, it isn't my, my, my prayer that's going to heal you. See, the prayer of faith between us shall save the sick. See? Now, you believe that God hears my prayer. And you know, you being a Christian, you should believe also. Now, I don't have to tell you what's wrong with you, though I know. But I don't have to tell you. Just so I pray for you. Is that right? All right. Unless you wanted me to tell you, see. All right. All right. Our Heavenly Father, our sister comes now, and she's standing here wanting a blessing from you. She comes to me as your servant, and I ask with all my heart that you will heal the woman, and may she go away from here tonight, Lord, and be able to eat anything she wants to. May she come back tomorrow night rejoicing, happy, made well. God, heal the woman's body. I lay hands upon her because you said so, not as a superstition, but you said they shall lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. And this whole group of Christians that are joining with me in prayer for the healing of this woman's body. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, sister, look out there. How many was with me in prayer then? Just raise your hand. Something has to go now, doesn't it? All right, you go and get well now, in the name of the Lord. All right. God bless you, my brother. Do you believe that he'll make you well? All right, sir. Now, Heavenly Father, I pray thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus, to heal our dear brother. Make him well. He needs you, Father. Realizing without you, he might go at any minute. 
but thou art here to make him well. And I pray, Father, now as I lay hands upon him, as the great commission was given to heal the sick, I lay my hands upon him and ask for healing in Jesus' name. Amen. Now look, sir, if there's a difference in that heart between now and tomorrow night, you write it back there, will you? God bless you. All right. God bless you. All right, young lady. Come, do you believe me to be his servant? Have you been in a meeting before? You've never been in a meeting before? Well, then perhaps I better... Ma'am, I see. You just come in today. This is your... Well, then, I'm a stranger and you're a stranger. Perhaps I'll talk to you just a moment. See, just that you've come a long way, something that you've never seen the meeting in operation before. Now, then I want you to look to me. Do you believe... Have you ever read my book called Man Sent from God? No. You've never read... No articles or nothing? About in the voice of healing, you've read. Did it, in there, have you read in the Bible where Jesus knew the secrets of the hearts of the people? And when he talked to the woman at the well, he talked to her a little while and he said, Go get your husband. He went right straight to the point. Is that right? And he knew what she had done. She'd been living in adultery. He knew her cause and what was hindering her in life. She seven That's right. All right. Now, if she had those husbands, and, and she was living wrong. Then Jesus went right straight to the point. Now, if he is the same today, and you're a stranger just standing here before me, then I'll be able by his spirit, if I be his prophet, to go right straight to where your trouble is. Is that right? And tell you what's wrong with you. Then will you believe me to be his prophet? You suffer with TV. It hasn't been pronounced bronchitis. It's in the throat. Yes, and now, do you believe now? And now, do you believe I pray for you that you you yes. get well? See? Yes. Now you've been suffering like that. Cause your trust, yes. yes. Now look. Another thing would you do? Sir? Would you promise to serve God all your life with all your heart and live for Him? Yes. You will. And you'll throw away every superstition, everything else, and serve God the rest of your life. Is that right? You'll do it. Yes. Now, if I pray for you, I want you to believe, sister. Father, I pray for this poor little woman. She's standing here, and I know she doesn't have very long to live without you. And I pray that you will make her well, heal her, may she go away from here. And now as this germ has set into her throat and in her chest, and God, we realize that it and to this irritation that it can't be much longer now. It'll take her life. But thou art here to heal her. And she's unaware of the danger. And God, and she's trying to press into the kingdom. I ask you to heal the woman. May she go from here and get well and serve you all the days of your life and be filled with your spirit and be a testimony in the country she comes from. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. I go rejoicing, believing God, you shall get well. All right, come in. Do you believe, sister? With all your heart. Now, Father, I pray for our sister that you will heal her and make her well. Grant it, Lord, that you, your spirit will come upon her. Then if her body will be made well. Grant it, Father, in Jesus Christ's name I ask it. Amen. Have you been in the meetings before? No, sir, I Never been in the meetings before? This is your first time? Oh, I see. I'm, you see what I'm trying to do tonight is pray for the sick. I just put my hands on you and pray for you. But do you believe that you are healed? Amen. Now, perhaps what if I tell you what was wrong with you, then you, you will accept who uh, had female trouble. Is that right? Yes, All right, you can go get well. The lady did, she said bronchitis. She didn't know she had bronchitis for quite a while, but she had TB. That's exactly what it was. I hate that I know exactly that's right. See? She said, I seen her moving like that, but when I put my hand over on her, I know it was TV. That's exactly right. So everyone be reverent. All right. Heavenly Father, I pray for this woman that you will heal her and make her well. Grant that your spirit come upon her. And as the prayer of faith shall save the sick, I ask, dear God, that you make her completely healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you believe, sister? Yes. All right. Go off the platform and say, thank you, Jesus, and return back rejoicing, happy. All right. You and the little girl both. Both of you. Now, do you believe that Jesus will make you well? Yes. Our Heavenly Father, as I lay hands upon the both, I pray 
with all my heart that you, as I stand here tonight representing you, I represent you, Father, in this way, that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I pray that you will heal both the lady and the little girl. And, and Father, that you will make them both well. May they come back tomorrow night testifying, saying, Oh, I healed both the little girl and I both. Grant it, Father, in Jesus Christ's name. Then, Father, I'll just continue these meetings this way till you tell me to stop. Amen. All right. I go on and hear from you tomorrow night. I believe with all your heart. Now, do you believe with all your heart? And believe that God will make you well if I ask you to. You will. Now, Heavenly Father, as I join with the thousands of others in here, Christians who believe that these people are going to be made well, I ask for the healing of this woman. May she go off this platform and be healthy and happy and return back tomorrow night testifying what has been done for her through Jesus' name. Amen. Now, God bless you, sister. Now, it's just, I say this, as you have believed, so will it be unto you. God bless you. All right. Will you come, lady? Now, do you believe? All right. You've been in meetings before, haven't you? You've been here. You know all about what takes place, don't, don't you? Yes, I do. All right. Now, you believe that the Spirit of the Lord is here. Is that right? Yes, I do. Our Heavenly Father, I pray for this woman in the name of your Son, Jesus, that you heal her body. Grant, Lord, that the woman will be made completely whole. In Jesus Christ's name, I rebuke this spirit of sickness upon the woman. Amen. Excuse me, audience. The colored lady sitting there, a young woman. Do you have a prayer card with a green looking dress on? You sitting there, you have a prayer card. Stand up just a minute. Oh, there it was. Mm-hmm. All right. You believe? You have stomach trouble too, didn't you? Is that right? Didn't you have stomach trouble? That's right. You had too. All right. You're both healed. All right. You want to see you. Everyone be reverent. Be real reverent. See? I just didn't want to take you slip out of that, man. Mm-hmm. Spirit's moving every way now. It's coming right in. When that woman sat down there, she also accepted Jesus for a better experience. Isn't that right, lady? If that's right, raise back up again. Right? The lady sitting next to you there, the just made the spirit hit her. You've been suffering with the female. Have you, have you got, first you got a prayer card? You ain't got a prayer card? Stand up just a minute. Let's see, you ain't got a prayer card. All right. You had female trouble, didn't you? All right. Now you go home with me too. Please go ahead. All right. All right. All right, everyone, just a moment. Just reverend. Oh, what the Spirit of God can do right now. If you just do whatever. Oh, I, I, I must get back to praying for the sick, though. Come here just a minute. Now, see when it goes to moving in. I can't hardly go without it moving me, see. Now, now here stands the poor thing. Lady, you've had a world of trouble, haven't you? You're just a lady that's walked up there in a prayer line. That's all. You are a Christian. You're the, and if you believe now that Jesus Christ will... No, sir. No, sir. You're suffering with a triune condition. That's exactly right. You need Jesus Christ. Isn't that right? You need him as your Savior. A little, like that woman standing right by there, I was trying to catch that over your shoulder. Come up here just a little bit closer so I'll be out. Look, will you accept him now as your Savior and believe that he will save your soul from sin right now and will make you well? Do you do that? Our Heavenly Father, I'll pray for her. Through Jesus Christ's name, I ask for her healing. And Lord God, a healing of her soul. May she go from here tonight rejoicing, happy, and be made well through Jesus' name. Amen. All right. What's up? All right. The next 25 can come out now from 50. From just a minute, sister. From 50, I uh, mean from 25 up to 50 and oh, lying right along and behind her now again. All right, all right. No, not now. No, ma'am. You can go now and 
Are you going to serve God the rest of your life? Are you going to live for him all your life? All right. Go right on now and be made. Be made. I minister you ought to get a hold of the woman right away. All right, sir. Uh, all right, sir. Now, let it go up to first for 25 up to 50. Now, an old. 25 to 50. All right, come to Father, I ask in Jesus' name for this man's healing. May he leave here tonight, Lord, and I, well, Lord, I know how to pray the prayer of faith. I ask that you let him get well. Amen. God bless you, brother. Now go re- rejoice in believing and let me hear from you tomorrow night. All right, come now. Oh, Father, I pray thee in the name of thy son, Jesus, that you heal the woman and make her well. As I lay hands upon her, I pray that you will make her every whip soul through Jesus Christ's name. Amen. God bless you, sister. Now go rejoicing. All right. Come late. Spirit tonight, thanking and praising God before the Holy Spirit ever comes. Is that right? They had the promise. Is that right? Oh, we got the promise. Mm. Amen. Just believe now. Come near, sister. Do you believe now with all your heart? Oh, Father, I ask for this poor little woman that you will heal her body as your angel standing near here, and I feel led to do these things. So, Father, I pray that you will heal her now. And I hope tomorrow night, Lord, that out of this great group of people that shall pass this platform tonight, that there will be at least 90% of them healed. Grant, Father, in Jesus Christ's name, I ask for this woman's healing. Amen. Now, rejoicing and happy and saying, thank you, Lord, and you shall, you'll, get, you'll get well. All right, come, sir. Do you believe with all your heart, sir? Do you believe I'll ask him you'll get well? Oh, Father, I pray as your servant, the only way we realize that, that prayer changes things. Prayer changes a sinner to a Christian. Prayer changes a sick man and to a well man. And I ask and join in prayer with this man that you heal his body. May he go off this platform happy, rejoicing. In Jesus' name, be well. Amen. Now, let me hear from you tomorrow night, my brother. All right, sir. All right, I come and do whatever now. Do you believe with all your heart? I you should. <laughs> Why do you think I said that? Because you're a minister of the word. Is that right? Okay. Suffering with a nervous condition. Is that right? <laughs> God, go home. I pray that you'll make this poor little woman well, and may she be happy the rest of her life serving you. Amen. Go rejoice and I'll be happy. All right. You believe with all your heart as you come? Father, I pray for her that you will heal her body. And as your servant, I pray the prayer of faith all I know how. And you said... Whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe you receive it, and you shall have it. It will be given to you. And I pray with all my heart. And how can the people doubt any more when you're making yourself known? Your great blessings are moving through this crowd. If there ever was a night of Pentecost, this is it. Here we are together. Gathered together, the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, moving around among the people. Oh, what a time. Bless this poor, suffering child of yours in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, sister. How come rejoicing? Come believing. Do you believe, my brethren? Oh, Father, I asked you to heal his body. He comes up here sincerely asking me to pray for him. He needs prayer. And your angel who met me said, pray for the sick. Get them to believe you. And we'll be well. Now, God, I pray that you'll grant it to this brother. May he leave this platform and get well in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, brother. I believe you're going to receive it, don't you? Amen. All right, come, sir. God bless you, sir. You believe? You must believe now. You understand, don't you? Uh, you know what I'm talking of. He's the great physician, that's right. And you'll go to serve him. He'll let you live, because only he can let you live now. Father, I pray that you'll bless this poor man, seeing this hideous demon has taken his life. Right down now, he hasn't got much time left. But this is the time, like the, the lepers that laid at the gate, they said, why set me here until we die? Let us get up and do something about it. May you rise tonight and say, here I am in the presence of the Almighty. I ask for my life, and may God spare for him and heal of his body. Uh, by your servant, Lord, lay hands upon him, along with these other Christians, asking for his healing. And may this hideous demon of cancer come out of him in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you, sir. Go on your own. God, go on praise you, sir. 
You haven't got nothing to lose. You put your trust in Christ, confess your healing, go believe him. All right, come, sir. You believe now with all your heart. You believe that Christ is going to make you well. I can't heal you, my brother, but I can pray for you. Is that right? You believe he'll make you well. I believe you believe that. Now, Heavenly Father, as I stand here holding this young boy tonight, I'm thinking of way over there how tens of thousands of them of his people received you. And then my mind drifts on back a little farther to one day come dragging down through Jerusalem an old rugged cross, dragging across the cobblestones. Look who's packing it. With a crown on his head made of thorns, his back bleeding, striped. I see him go down towards that little hill, looks like a skull. On his road out there, thieves walking by his side, packing across. Big burly man, but he was little and thin. And he saw his little poor, thin, blood out body was dying. Oh God, that old cross dragging out the bloody footprints. There comes Simon, the serene, and the Ethiopian. Come along and help him pick the cross up and pack it on up to Calvary. God hears his children. You understand it? I pray for the healing of this boy with sincerity. May go home and get well. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, my son. Go and I find out tomorrow night. I want to hear what's happening. All right. All right. You believe, sir? Yes, sir. You should. All right, sir. Our Heavenly Father, I ask for his healing. Grant, Lord, that your blessings will be upon him, and he'll go from here tonight and be healed and preach the gospel harder than he ever did in all of his life. In Jesus' name, <laughs> God bless you, my brother. All right, come you don't want to go blind. I you want to heal now. Ah, uh, you are. God bless you. That just takes. That's the way to do it. You see, you're standing right here, Mo. Off the platform. All right, sir. All right. You also have something wrong with your eyes, and you want to be healed. Is that right? Your eyes look nice and clear, but they're going by. You've been always. You had to hold your books close and things like that to read. But now, something's happened. Go in the name of the Lord Jesus. Believe with all your heart. You believe, sir. Oh, God, I pray that in the name of thy holy son, Jesus, that you heal this young man. May he go off this platform tonight full of the spirit of God serving you all of his life with a good, healthy body the rest of his days. Amen. God bless you, my brother. Go in the peace of God upon you. Poor dad. You believe with all your heart. You do. You do. God bless my brother and make him well. Father, I pray for him. Somebody's dad. God, lay your healing hands upon him and make him well. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, brother, you go believing and you'll be able to eat and not take that stuff one of these days. God bless you. Now, come, lady, realizing that you must believe Christ or die. Isn't that right? A cancer would kill you. It's all, it'll, it'll do it, certainly, if you can't accept him. But you believe it now, don't you? <laughs> Father, I pray for this sister, uh, maybe some baby's mother here. Lord, oh, God, be merciful, and may she go from here tonight rejoicing and happy as I curse that cancer in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you, sister. Go believing. Maybe. All right. Come, sir. You believe me as God's prophet, don't you? You believe that I, God sent me, that I am now in this feeling that you know that's present is the Spirit of God, don't you? Yes, sir. All right. Now, would you serve him the rest of your days? If he'll make you well, will you serve him? Yes. Yeah. You will. All right. Now, I want you to believe with all your heart. Our Heavenly Father, I ask now that you'll make this poor man that Satan is trying to to lay him up here in a wheelchair or on a bed and break down his feet and his hands and, and callous or uh, make the bones run together. I pray, God, that in Jesus' name that you'll stay that and may get well through Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Now, brother, if you believe with all your heart, you'll never be bothered with arthritis anymore. Just go and be as well as you can be. All right, let's say praise be to God.
All right, lady. Now, of course, there's many things wrong with you. One thing, you're going blind and your eyes are getting bad. Come here just a minute. Isn't that right now? That's right. That's right. Father, I pray that is now as your spirit standing here, the anointing sweeping down over this building, how can people stand still? Lord, I pray that you will heal this woman and make her well. And thy blind spirit, leave her now in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, sister, you have what you've asked for. Go and believe with all your heart that you may well. All right. Come, lady. Wasn't it strange that you all were together wanting the same thing? God, I pray that in Jesus Christ's name that you'll grant to her her healing also, Lord. May she go away from here and be perfectly normal and well. Through the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, amen. Yes, let's say praise the Lord, everybody, so that we can read. That's wonderful. Come, lady. Do you believe with all your heart? You believe that our Lord Jesus can make you well. And the only thing that you believe I have to do is just ask him. And if I ask him, then he'll do it. Is that right? You believe? All right. Now I'm going to ask him, Father, I pray that you heal the woman and make her well. May she leave from here tonight and go home and be well. In Jesus Christ's name, I bless her. And you said, whatever you bind on earth, I'll bind in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth, I'll loose in heaven. Then, I, Father, I ask that you loose her from her infirmities in Jesus' name. God bless you, sister. Go believing with all your heart. Now come, sister. Do you believe with all your heart? Come just a little nearer. I want to lay hands on you to pray for you. Now you believe if I'll ask God with all my heart to let you get well, you believe you'll do it. You believe it with all your heart. You truly believe. All right. Now, you believe all that nervousness will leave you? You do? <laughs> Why, it's already done it, so now you can go on your road rejoicing. Today. All right. Let's say praise be to God, everybody. My sister. Oh, it's Almighty God, author of life and giver of ever good gifts, send thy blessings upon this woman who's standing here with this deaf spirit. Satan, you've done this evil thing to cause her to walk before a vehicle somewhere and go to a premature grave, but you're defeated. I come as God's servant, adjoining with the rest of these Christians here tonight, and I adjure thee by Jesus, the Son of God, come out of her. Do you believe now with all your heart? And uh, how, uh, do you love him with all your heart? And uh, isn't he wonderful? He is indeed. Just, he, he's, he's, he's just glorious, isn't he? Do you love him with yes, everything, sure. everything you can? And you believe that he made you well? I do indeed. Then you're healed. You're hearing back to you? You're normally, the old condition that's been bothering you, female troubles, is gone. Now you go off platform, say, thank you, Lord, and be made well. All right, strange, this woman's death also. Come here. Satan, thou demon, uh, we as Christians say, come out from the woman, leave her. Amen. Through Jesus' name, leave her. All right. You love him with all your heart? Yes, I Oh, you do. Well, that's yes, wonderful. Nice now, sight. It's almost yeah. now, you, you have that also? Yeah. How, how long have you been in this condition? Well, sometimes. Sometimes. Yes. Isn't yes. it wonderful that the I Lord Jesus have, has... I have the and I have to give it a long time. Isn't that awful? Yes. And now, when you was back on her years ago, as a young woman out there teaching those children and so forth in a school, and and it got to a place that you couldn't hear and so forth like that, and now think, even in this age, that the Lord Jesus has restored your hearing to you. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. Now raise your hands and say, thank you, Lord. That's God bless you. Go off the platform. Brother and Thank you so much because I have written to you and received benefit from your uh, letter. Thank you very much, Mother. God bless you. Come, brother. Our Heavenly Father, I ask in the name of thy Son, Jesus, that you bless this man and heal him. Grant it, Lord Jesus. May your Spirit come upon him and make him well. Through Jesus' name, amen. Our God bless you. That's right. Go off the platform, saying praise the Lord. All right. That's all of them. All right. Now, let's see. How many here that it wants to be prayed for again? Let's see your hands. Where are we all at? If I could get a line of people maybe somewhere that, that maybe someone that hasn't, or somewhere that I don't know how to do this now. Um, how many of you are in the bleacher row there? How many sick along there? Let's see your hands. All along there. All right, let's try having that first bleacher roll on the bottom to come over this way just a minute. 
just there, sit. There, you all raise up there at the row and come over this way. And then maybe I can take something back out in here. Then I'll try to get. What's that? Uh, yes, bring them right over this way. And let me pray for them. Not so tired. Just now, there's a few visions in this. Thank you. How many love the Lord? Say amen. Oh, I believe we're going to have a great result of the ministry. Don't you believe it? I believe our Lord is going to be here to heal the sick and the afflicted, to make them well. Now, let's all real reverently, if you will, just a moment. Let's sing this away. Christ's name, amen. Now go, sister. I want to hear you testify tomorrow night of what, what the Lord has done for you. All right, have faith and believe now, everybody. Do you believe, sister? With all your, oh, Jesus, I pray that you heal her and make her well. Grant it, Lord, to Jesus Christ's name, I ask for her healing. Amen. All right, move right on off, believing now, thanking God, and getting well. And you, we know that you can do it. All right, sir. You believe you'll do it? Oh, God, open up thy prey in Jesus' name. Be thou open in Jesus Christ's name. You love me? Yes. Can you hear me all right? Yes. Feel all right now, too? Yes. Your healing is there. You hear, you're well. Go rejoice and thank All right. Come here. All right. How do you do? You want to accept Jesus as your personal Savior and love him? Yes. With all your heart, you will now? All right, sir. The Lord bless you and make you well. God be with her and help her. I pray through Jesus Christ's name, the Son of the living God, that you take her from this platform. May she serve you all the days of her life in a good, strong, well body. God bless you. Go rejoice now. I'm happy. And all right, sir. Of course, I see you're moving around on your cane, yes. your crutch. You believe that God will make you well? Yes, sir. Now, look, if I pray for you, do you believe God will let you go ahead and walk without that old crutch and thing? Yes, sir. You don't, you don't want to pack that longer anyhow. Then when you go down, you can lay it back on the platform and go on back to your seat and yes. pray for you. Because, look, he promised me, if I get you to believe me, yes. and be sincere when I pray, I have what I ask for. Yes. Now, what got you that way is this arthritis is much in this shape, but look, but if you, if you believe him, and, 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 and I believe him, then he said, whatever two agree and ask, they shall receive it. You believe that? Yes, He's here. You believe that? Now, you, this is your time to be healed. Now, you do just as I ask you now. God will bless you. Father, I pray that you heal her, that she might give a testimony in her community of the power of Almighty God. Grant it, Lord. I bless her now for her healing as your servant in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 
you had other things wrong with you too, and you see, they're gone over. So you go on down and do just as a thing. All right. All right. All right, sir. Now, you you believe that God will make you well, young lady? You do. All right, come here. Dear Jesus, I pray for this woman. I asked you, it was all my heart, seeing this great group out here, Lord, to be prayed for. I asked in Jesus' name that you heal this girl. May she go off this platform and and be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. You believe? There goes the lady packing her cane up in the air. She just just hang it up on a picture when you get down there, Auntie, and or a memorial. All right. You want to get rid of that blood condition, that anemia? You believe that God will make you well? Almighty God, I lay hands upon this woman and ask in the name of Jesus Christ that you heal her. Father, please grant this blessing through Jesus Christ's name. Amen. I go tomorrow as you feel. Come and let me see what. All right, you. I got your prayer line quietened down. All right. You believe now with all your heart? You do. Now, just so the people might know out there, he sees we're standing talking, you and I together, just to get to get quietened just a little. Too many visions hurt me, you see, and I'm trying to pray for everybody. But you sure like to get over that. I bet it condition would you? Isn't that right? And your gallbladder yeah, trouble, that's yeah. right. God, I pray that in Jesus' name that you will heal her and make her well. Grant it, Lord, may this, this condition leave her and she'll be made completely whole in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. God bless you. Go on your road rejoicing, saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Do you believe, sir? Do you believe that God will make you well? Oh, Father, I pray that in the name of thy Son, Jesus, that you heal this man. Grant, Lord, knowing that he is in a serious condition, I pray that you'll make him well. Through Jesus Christ's name, amen. Lord, I don't know how to do a lot of pray, Father, that now, of all the obedience of following in the Holy Spirit, that you will now heal every person in this building. The may these sick people that are here, every, especially those with heart trouble, that's just going to die pretty soon unless something's done. And then, Lord, next, the cancer cases, may they be healed. And, Lord, may the TB cases, they're next, may they be healed. May all the diseases be healed. May those who are crippled, may they be healed. May the letters that you have, may the, the, the represents the sick, may they be healed. And may every unbelieving spirit, that unaccepting of Christ, may it leave. And may 